What's up guys? This is gonna be like my first official episode here. So I wanted to start with something small and kind of like how to change your oil and so on, so forth, stuff like that. But I actually have to fix my girlfriend's car, but we're still gonna go over some basics today. We're gonna go how to jack up a car safely. And uh, then we're actually gonna change out a tie rod, maybe a couple other things depending on what's broke. So I'll show you the problem here. All right, so as you can see, uh, my girlfriend spun out of control, hit a curb, bent some things out of place. Uh, hopefully it's just a tie rod up here. It might be a wheel bearing. I won't know until I get the car off the ground. Hopefully it's just an outer tie rod as well. But if I'm gonna do them, I might just do them both, uh, the inner and outer tie rod. As you can see here, this wheel's straight, right? Okay, you might not be able to see it with this camera angle, but I'll show you guys. Uh, the wheel's actually straight, and then this wheel's pointed outward, so she definitely messed up her alignment, and she definitely bent one of her tie rods. So I'm going to show you exactly what's going on and why it needs to be fixed. Let me just get her car started here so I can turn the wheel. All right, let's hope this starts. It hasn't been started in a few days, so it's probably going to... But we never know. Yep, oh, turned on just fine. I don't know why those are on. All right, so a wheel should never be able to turn that far to the left, unless you got like a drift set up maybe. But uh, yeah, as you can see, it looks like the CV shaft is okay. Uh, I know you guys probably don't know what a CV shaft is. Um, and she may have bent a couple other things, but I'm not exactly 100% sure. It's, like I said, it's like a car the ground. CV, anyways, the CV shaft is what goes to the transmission in front wheel drive cars. That makes the wheel turn, essentially. All right, now I'll show you guys what's actually going on. All right. So as you can see, that's not supposed to be bent. Um, everything looks like it might be okay up in there. Not 100% sure. I'll have to get this boot off to take a look. But that's definitely fucking bent. And uh, it's going to be interesting how to loosen that bolt up to get it off. Might, might end up being to cut it off or something. Everything else in here, barely okay, I guess. Uh, I don't see really any issue back there. That still looks straight. I mean, this is meant to bend though. Obviously, the car's bouncing up and down. But as long as she didn't like shove it once you hit the curve back into the transmission or something, fuck up the teeth on it or anything like that, it be okay. All right. Other side should be fine. My biggest issue is when I start shaking this, this wheel gonna rock back and forth. That means she fucked up her wheel bearing. Um, she's gonna need new wheels, obviously. These are damaged. They're not gonna be able to be rebalanced unless they throw a whole bunch of weight on them, and that's kind of pointless at that point. But other than that, let's hope that's the only issue. I don't think there's any damage to the brakes. She did drive it home, but like I said, once we get this thing up in the air, we'll be able to get a better right, look. So one more quick thing. I gotta move this car from in front of the garage. I also gotta get the race car out of the garage. Uh, I wanna heat the garage up so the oil is slightly above freezing temperatures before I start the car. This thing runs race oil, so it's real thick. And I want oil to get to the, obviously the heads and parts of the engine that'll take a while when a car, uh, you start up a car for, with like, you know, I guess you could say, when you do a cold start essentially. So I just want there to, you know, the oil to be able to move freely and nothing gets damaged when I'm starting it up. So that'll be the first thing I have to do before we get my girlfriend's car in here and jack it up. Kind of like a smaller space heater here just to heat the garage up a little bit. One, it's really cold. I don't want to work in a cold. And two, I want to get it warm in here. So the oil kind of stays at like a, I guess you could say like an ambient temperature. Uh, it's probably about, uh, I want to say without this heater, probably like 45 degrees in the garage. And starting this thing up when it's cold is really difficult because it's carbureted and doesn't have a choke. And the oil stick, like I said before, you want the oil to be at an ambient temperature so it moves a little bit freely, more freely, I guess you could say. Uh, I know this probably isn't the safest thing to do with a heater like this, but I'm supervising it and I'm not gonna leave it running for a long amount of time. So obviously I wouldn't leave this unattended. You know, that is dangerous, these things get hot. I don't know, you know, what happens if the drywall lights up. Obviously the units here aren't separated by uh, cement or anything. So, you know, if a fire did happen, it'd be would be this entire complex. But like I said, I'm supervising it. There's really nothing in front of it. Uh, behind it, it doesn't get that warm, but I keep checking just to make sure. And I got the propane tank outside. Literally, if something were to happen, I have a fire extinguisher in the car here, and I have a, uh, just open up the garage and toss this out, out front. So 
That's currently the stage we're at. All right, guys, so I'm just moving the car around right now. I just gotta make room so I can pull the Camaro out. So I'm just moving my daily to the street and parking it there. It's probably where it's gonna stay until I uh, until I get my girlfriend's car moved. But uh, right now there's a big uh, like U-Haul truck blocking my way, so I can't really pull my girlfriend's car out. It looks like they're moving uh, like a washer and dryer and a refrigerator, but those guys are usually pretty quick, so it shouldn't take too long. But uh, anyways, the garage is all heated up. We're ready to rock and roll with getting a Camaro It's gonna out. get loud. Remy, don't pee in the house. Quickly do this before all the heat gets let out. I think that's clear. Yep. So Camaro's on the street after starting it like 15 times, probably really ticking off my neighbors. And I'm just waiting for this uh, Enterprise running truck to move so I can move my uh, girlfriend's car into the garage. All right, guys. So uh, I got my uh, girlfriend's Equinox in the garage. Um, I'm going to start showing you guys how to properly uh, jack this thing up, what to look for underneath, and uh, pretty much... Make sure you don't put your jack through your floorboards. So let's get underneath and here. This kind of sucks because I don't have a shop light. But once we get underneath here, we can see that, all right, this is plastic. So we don't want to jack the car up from here. You probably could jack the car up from this right here. It actually looks like they may have been doing so with the scratches here. And then where are you going to put your uh, jack stand? So this is what's called the pinch weld along the car here. The pinch weld is usually reinforced in some spots. So you can actually put a put your jack there, put your jack stands there. So what I'm going to probably end up doing is I'm going to jack the car up right here by this thicker piece of pinch weld. Usually that's uh, what the manufacturer puts there. So you can obviously put your jack there if you had to jack your car up, if you had a flat tire or something. And then I'm probably, this seems to be pretty thick right here as well. As long as this doesn't bend, I'm probably going to put the jack stand right here. And that should be just fine. And then it'll be the same on the other side as well. I just put a couple pieces of wood back there. Um, they do sell real like wheel chocks at your local auto parts store. And that'll probably be the best. Um, I always recommend, especially when it comes to safety, getting the best stuff. I mean, obviously, I'm uh, kind of cutting corners here, which I should be doing that. But when it comes to your safety with cars and you're jacking stuff up, you definitely want to make sure you're getting the good quality stuff because... If the car falls down on you, you could get seriously injured or worse. Um, I always recommend getting a good jack as well, like an AC Delco. I know some of you may have jacks from Harbor Freight and they work just fine. But, uh, you know, recently Harbor Freight had a recall on their jack stands because they were falling down because the weld on the lock wasn't strong enough. So I know this AC Delco is going to last me a long time. Hopefully it lasts me a long time, but I know it doesn't have any recalls. I know it's a quality piece of equipment. This is one of the things, if you're going to spend money on it, spend money on a decent jack. going to go up till we hit that metal piece there. It's going to be kind of hard to see. I don't have a lot of room to work with. But once it gets on there, as long as it doesn't push anything through, it doesn't seem like it's going to. Seems like the car's slowly coming off the ground. Just double check, make sure I'm not. See, one thing I don't want to do is bend this either. 
but it should be cleared, which it is just barely, but it's cleared. All right, let's just double check here. See where that's at. Yep, still on the pinch weld, looks good. We'll actually bring it down and see if we're bending anything. Nope, that appears to be just fine. So that proves it's a good, uh, it's a good place to put the uh, the jack yeah, in. The ground. Now before I actually take the wheels off and uh, get jack stands underneath it, I want to shake this wheel with my hand here to see how the wheel bearing is. Gonna do that, but yeah, the wheel bearing seems okay actually. So that's a good sign. Bad news is is that uh we know um the tie rod and now i found out if the inner tie rod is bad so that still has to be so I, I jacked the car back down for one reason so i don't have like a what do you call that a four-sided tire iron i just have the one from the spare tire but i know at least it should fit these lug nuts now the reason i jacked the car back down and put its own weight on itself is because if I jack this car up, I don't want the wheels to really spin and it'll be a lot easier. I can just kind of get leverage and kick down on this to at least loosen these up and that's fine. There's weight on it. So you don't want to take them all the way off, but it's not going to damage the lugs or the wheel or the car or anything. If you just break them loose first, as you can so. see, this wheel spins freely. The car is actually jacked up. Now, remember how I said I was going to jack the car up and place the jack stand, uh, like, right in here somewhere. Well, thankfully before I did that, now you could technically jack the car up from there. That's what it's for, especially like if you're on the side of the road with a flat tire, there's these little indent points here and that's what they're for to show you where to put it. That's your, you know, emergency roadside jack. Now, as you can see, I went online and, and double checked and did a little research and uh, found out that you should definitely be placing your jack stands along a subframe, which I'll show you guys is up here in the front. And if I have enough room, which I should, as long as I swing the jack the right way, I'm gonna start jacking the car up actually from this front part right here. This is a subframe that's solid. Now you can never jack your car up right here on these, what they would call, I guess you call them control arms. You never wanna jack your car from the control arms or you don't wanna jack it up from the differential either because that'll do some serious damage. But this subframe here is actually where the uh, manufacturer recommends if you're gonna do any work underneath the car that you jack your car off from. So I'm actually gonna put the jack right here. That's the center of the car. It'll give me a decent uh, amount of room to get that jack. Uh, well, I, that jack's already where it needs to be, but I can get that jack a little bit higher and I can also get a jack on the same side and it'll be even, so it'll be a little bit safer. Also, another thing I forgot to mention, which is very important on these cars. I know I got it chalked in the rear, but an extra little uh, safety measure is uh, engage your emergency brake. That'll keep at least one of these wheels locked so it doesn't run. Car's jacked up, same spot on both sides. Both wheels are off the ground. All right, let's get so the So I took off. the lug nut off, or lug nuts off, I should say, and I got the wheel off. So good news is, shaking this thing here, doesn't seem like the wheel bearing's loose at all. Doesn't seem like anything's really loose up in here. Obviously using my hand probably isn't gonna be like the the true test to see if anything's messed up, but it's a good sign it's not wobbling around. So here, once again, is the issue. This seems to be the only issue that I can see underneath here. I don't see anything else that's really damaged or broken or bent or anything like that. So she is gonna need a new inner and outer tie rod. This right here is gonna be your outer tie rod, okay? Stops at this nut right here. This is the nut that they use to adjust your alignment and so on and so forth. So I gotta get both of these off. Uh, first part would be disconnecting this. There's a bolt right here. I don't think there's a cotter pin in this one. Doesn't appear to be any cotter pin in that one to pull off. Um, then it'll pop up out of there and then we'll unscrew it. And then we'll work on getting the inner tie rod out and just assessing the damage, if there is any damage in that boot there. So other than that, this is probably where I'm gonna stop the vlog for today. Uh, tomorrow I gotta go get a specialty tool to get the inner tie rod out. So uh, the auto parts stores are closed right now. So I'll have to wait till tomorrow. But uh, anyways, guys, uh, thanks for watching and uh, tune into the next episode. Right, I forgot to mention a couple things um, because I know some people are gonna ask, what is the function of the tie rod? So I'm going to show you. 
the tie rod attaches to your rack and pinion steering and that essentially controls in which direction your wheels go so i'll show you uh, as best i can let me start the car I'll show you as best i can here all right so i got to have one arm in the car all right but as you see Turn the wheel to the right, and that's pushing that out. Making the wheel go to the right. Now I'm turning the wheel to the left, and pulling this in. So that's what your tie rods do. They attach to your wheel, and they control which way your tire is going to go. Now, as you can see, that wheel is now straight, right? Okay. Maddie's wheel is not straight. Maddie's wheel straight looks like that and then that turns a little bit to the left so that's technically what your tie rods do they attach your rack and pinion steering to your wheels and then put your wheels in whichever direction you turn the steering wheel so that's one little thing i wanted to add before people uh started going what the hell does a tie rod do all right and last thing last thing so i know this being a car vlog a lot of people are going to call me out and say i'm calling things by the wrong name i'm not explaining something the right way or uh, I should be doing something differently. That's just how I'm, I'm expecting that. Uh, I'm all down for some criticism. That's kind of why I'm doing this. If you could teach me something, teach me how to do it a better way. Uh, hopefully I'm teaching you guys something and maybe we're learning something together. Uh, another thing, uh, I'm not a professional by any means. I just know a thing or two and uh, I use YouTube a lot to figure out how to do stuff. I know a lot of uh, like professional auto mechanics will give YouTube a bad name. They say, oh, you're a YouTube mechanic. But YouTube is a really great resource. You can't find everything on YouTube, but if you can't find it on YouTube, usually you can go to a forum online and there's plenty of step-by-step uh, uh, -step directions on how to do it on the forums. Uh, that's what I use a lot. Sometimes um, I'll call like Chevy or you know the manufacturer and ask them. You can also go get a chitlin's manual or a haynes guide from your local auto parts store mind you those are a complete tear down and rebuilds of the specific vehicle that you're working on and they don't really explain like they'll tell you the part but if you don't know what that part's called uh it's not going to explain you what that part is uh but anyways that's what i'm going to finish up tomorrow we'll get the tie rods off and uh hopefully that fixes the issue we do have to check the other side of the car as well like i said because i got to make sure that nothing's damaged on that side we also got to check the rear I'll show you guys uh, what I'm looking for on the rear. But uh, thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe. I think that's what these uh, auto vloggers say these days. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys.